Welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids everyone. Jungo here along with Barks. Today we'll be talking about axis rotation. So Barks, tell us a little bit about it. What is it? So axis rotation, simply put, is the direction in which the ball is rotated. So just about everyone is gonna fall between zero and 90 degrees. Most people are gonna fall somewhere in the middle of that. So on the extremes at zero degrees, the ball will be rotating parallel to the gutters, so really end over end. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, at 90 degrees, the ball will be rolling parallel to the foul line towards the gutter. So let's take it over to Jung, and he can demonstrate both of those. As a pro shop operator, we really care about axis rotation and axis tilt and your PAP because that's what we use to lay out your bowling ball. That's what we use to choose what ball will be best for you, what ball will fit in your arsenal the best. And so because of that, all those factors put together will help us make the best choice for which ball, which layout, and which surface prep will be best for your game. So for example, amongst our GR Pro Shop crew here, an example of a player with low axis rotation would be someone like Simu, who rolls it much more end over end. On the high spectrum, closer to 90 degree, would be someone like Brandon, who really gets his hand around the ball. So this brought up an interesting question. How would you guys like us to do a video on how to take your own stats? All you're gonna need is a camera and a piece of tape, piece of white tape. Let us know down in the comments. So a lot of higher level bowlers will have quite a spectrum of different releases to create different axis rotation. So what's a situation where someone would need, say, lower axis rotation versus higher axis rotation? As you've seen in the pre-
conditions, being around the ball is a little bit better than being right behind the ball. You're going to get a little more defined ball motion off the end of the pattern. So the next thing we did, we moved over to the left lane onto 37 feet Broadway. So the same thing is on the right lane. He threw his regular rotation. We lined him up for a strike on that. So the next shot he threw was closer to zero degrees of rotation. And that ball picked up a little bit early and rolled forward and left a flat 10. And the last shot he threw, he got his hand really around the ball, closer to 90 degrees. And as soon as the ball hit the friction, it jumped left and went Brooklyn. So in general, on shorter patterns, less axis rotation is ideal. It helps get the ball rolling a little bit earlier and controls the shape off the end of the pattern. So we've talked a lot here about axis rotation, but do you have any final thoughts, Jordan? Yeah, just one. So at the start of tournaments, when I have to play pretty far to the right and pretty straight up the boards, I'm gonna cut down my axis rotation as much as I can to get that ball rolling forward and not be so violent off the back end when the lanes are fresh. So as the day goes on and I have to move my feet left and get more into the middle of the lane and towards the left side of the lane, I'm gonna increase my axis rotation as I go left. The boards are getting drier and I'm gonna need that ball to travel down lane a little bit further and kick that corner a little bit harder. As you can see in some of my ball review videos when I'm loft in the left gutter, uh, I'm around it as much as I can so I can get that ball to really corner down lane. And on the fresh oil, maybe even using urethane, I'm gonna be up the back of it just to really control that hook. All those dry boards down lane, really trying to control that. So hope this helps everyone. All right, so that wraps us up on axis rotation. Stay tuned for the next video where we talk about axis tilt. What is it?